Greetings folks and welcome to the Ireland Slideshow. This is a few pictures that I took on my trip. When we go to Ireland, we're going to leave out of New York and fly into Dublin. I flew into S Shannon, which is on the left-hand side. You can see on this map. And a few of those spots are where we're going to visit when we go there. The first day we arrived, we arrived at 6 o'clock in the morning. It was an absolutely beautiful day. And these pictures that you're going to see here are all pictures that I took myself, with either my phone or with my uh, SLR camera. The Connacht Hotel is a hotel that we stayed in, in Galway. It's a beautiful hotel. This photo doesn't really do justice. The hotel is much bigger than this. And you can see by the size of the indoor pool that they have that it is a, is a five-star resort. A few pictures here are from the uh, lobby of the resort. And... Uh, we're not sure if we're staying in this hotel or a hotel in Limerick. Uh, our first day out, we went to the Connemara Mountains. And you can see these mountains are extremely beautiful. It was still uh, springtime there, so we encountered a few folks along the side of the road on our journey. And uh, this is not uncommon in Ireland to see wildlife. This guy felt like he needed to pose for us. Don't ask me why they spray paint them, but they do. Our first stop was a place called the Kylemore Abbey, which we're not sure we're going to actually go to on our trip, but it's one of the options between this and the Blarney Castle. We also stopped on our trip and visited a few just scenic places along the way. You'll notice the stone walls. The west coast of Ireland is really uh, covered with stone walls. All the stones come from the properties themselves. They use them to mark off their land and to mark off sections of their land, depending on the livestock that they have. And this, these all, all these are shots from Galway. Galway is an ocean town, fishing town, on the west coast of Ireland. And it's just absolutely beautiful. Uh, we were very lucky. We had some, some great weather. And one of the nights uh, we went to this, uh, this is a pizza place in the center of Galway where they had Irish folk music. And the high school band that was staying, they also had a Bavarian band there that night. The high school band that was staying in the hotel with us, they, are, they gave the band the entire restaurant for themselves. So they had a private showing with that, uh, with that Bavarian band and the folk music. And you could see the countryside here. Um, very different from anything that you see here in the United States. There are some similarities, but uh, I love this picture because it shows a thatched roof and a satellite dish. Another one of our little buddies on the road, on the way. So we took a drive down the coast uh, so that we could go to the Cliffs of Moore. And these are some pictures I took, it, it stopped along the way at a couple of beaches and just took some pictures of the landscape and this is a part of the of the country that's called the Burren, B-U-R-R-E-N and the Burren has landscapes like you see with this lush green and it also has landscapes that look lunar. Now these are not the Cliffs of Moore, those are the baby cliffs. Those are only about 70 feet high. And this is the road on the way and no, I wasn't driving on the wrong side of the road. That's the side they drive on there. Uh, and you can see, I love this picture. You can see all the way up the coast and how the road winds. And these are the Cliffs of Moher. When you pull in, you can see the people walking up to walk along the cliffs. And uh, get a perspective. You can look at the people here, how tiny this is. And then we pull back a little bit. And it's just one of the most beautiful things you've ever seen. And the Cliffs of Moher are... 800 to 1,000 feet high, and they get many visitors every day, and there are a couple different paths you can go on, and some of them are, shall we say, more dangerous than others, and we will, we will obviously be on the path that's closest to the inside rather than the outside, and it's just staggeringly beautiful. Yes, there's my daughter. That's their selfie stick. Actually, it's a GoPro stick, and here's a shot of the, of the uh, cliffs from the other side. Just um, one of the most breathtakingly beautiful things you're ever going to see in your life. So uh, obviously took uh, quite a few pictures while we were there. And it was a little overcast. You can see in that picture 
when we were there, but uh, at one point it brightened up, and you can see from this side, it's a little bit nicer. The cliffs go on for about eight miles. Um, obviously, we won't do the entire thing, but it's very famous. I mean, if you go on the internet and look up the Cliffs of Moher, this is a very, very famous spot where folks stop. A little bit more of the Irish countryside, a few more beach pictures. And afterwards, we took the car and we drove to a place called Bunratty Folk Park. And uh, just as we were in the different towns on our way through, we took some pictures. And this is, this is Bunratty Castle. And Bunratty Castle is a medieval castle that's actually preserved. And all the rooms are still like they were. And you can walk through and see some of the rooms. I'm not going to show you the whole castle here. I took about 1,200 pictures, but I, I'm going to give you a few. So you go through these... Uh, these spire, spiral staircases, you get up to the top and you can look out over the parapets. And this is another one of the rooms. And, you, and these pictures really don't do it justice. I mean, it's just staggeringly beautiful. And of course, you know, we had saw a drummer in stained glass. And this is the folk park that's attached to Bunratty. They had a bunch of animals and a bunch of different things you can do. And here's the castle again. We then, on the next day, went to Dublin, which is where we're going to start our trip. This is Bewley's Hotel. This is one of the Bewley's Hotels. There are several Bewley's Hotels. We're not sure which we're going to be in, but they're all equally um, fantastic. They're a five-star resort, and um, you can see by the lobby of the hotel. and uh, It's just wonderful. And uh, a few shots of the inside of the hotel, and this is the outside of the hotel. And it's hard to get a to get a, a feel for how big this place is. Maybe you, if you could judge by the people that you see walking around in the pictures, but it's it's absolutely enormous. Uh, and it's got a subterranean uh, restaurant where the kids will eat. Um, and it's just on a main street. It's just a, about two miles outside of Dublin, three miles. And this is the neighborhood. This is what the typical town houses look like. And this is a shot of the mayor's house. We went and stopped and saw him. And here's a picture of the mayor and myself. And the mayor is handing us a invitation for the 2016 parade. And there's my family, minus my son, in the, uh, in the mayor's home. And these pictures here are uh, just around, um, around Dublin at night. We saw this building. I'm not really sure what the building was, but it was really interesting. And this is the Harp Bridge. The Harp is the actual... Uh, symbol of Ireland. Now this here and it looks like something out of Harry Potter. This is the Trinity College University Library and it's like nothing you've ever seen in your life and you can walk through here and you can see the books that they have on display and all the busts of the famous writers and in the center they have a bunch of books on display that you can see there's an original Shakespeare a uh, number of different things in these glass cases. This is St. Patrick's Cathedral. Those are the chairs where the knights would sit, and those are the original cr banners from the Crusades and their swords and their helmets there. St. Patrick's is huge. It is one of the biggest buildings I've ever been in. Again, these are some more pictures from the, the Crusades. And you can see the knights' helmets there and, the, and their sword handles. And there's a better shot. And these are all chairs where they would sit uh, during the, the uh, church services. Again, some more uh, crusade banners. Some of these, some of these flags are four and five hundred years old. Some of the stained glass is as old as well. And this is the outside of St. Patrick's. One of the, this is uh, the uh, the other side of the church. One of the stops on our tour will be to go through St. Patrick's, so you get to see this up close. Um, it's really, really amazing. And then these are some pictures of downtown Dublin. Just a few shots as we walk through the city. It's very, very clean. It's very friendly. Here's a great shot uh, from the fifth floor of one of the buildings we were in. And... Uh, the architecture that you're going to see, and you realize some of these buildings are hundreds of years old. This is actually a shopping mall that you can go in. And this is a great shot. I love the reflection in the water in that picture. This was uh, another shot just walking around Dublin. 
very, very safe city, very clean city. This is Grafton Street where you can go shopping. And uh, they close off the street. I love this picture. Um, they close off the street and you just walk around and go shopping. Now, the next day was the parade. And parents, you'll have uh, grandstand seats for the parade. This is the center of Dublin where the parade goes through. This is about an hour before the parade starts. The very famous center of their, uh, of their city. Um, the big spire you see, the silver spire in the center, marks the spot where their independence began. And I should mention that uh, they got their independence. Uh, there's the grandstands, by the way, that the parents will be sitting in those. They're covered. And um, they got their independence in 1916. So we're going there on the 100th anniversary of their independence. And this is, I, I took some shots of the local color. Uh, these guys here were all from Australia. Um, and these guys were from Germany. And it was interesting to note that most of the people were from different countries at the parade. And of course, this window across the street got quite a bit of action. So I was taking a few shots as that developed during the course of the morning. And there's St. Patrick himself driving these snakes out of the parade. This is the Lord Mayor's coach. This coach is over 500 years old and is all gold. And of course, these are Boston United States Boston firefighters and of course the Chicago Police Department sent their Emerald Society pipe and drums there's those guys right there and the windows across the street got even more activity I thought that was kind of neat I took this picture of course for the car it's an amazing old Rolls-Royce and then you see some of the things that go down the street these were themed so this was all a springtime theme and all the the performers, I guess you could say, different age girls. These girls here are a little older. Um, they're all part of the same little act that goes down the street. Then the next one was all sweet things, all sweet. So they had popcorn, kids dressed up like popcorn. They had lollipops. And they had you know, ice cream cones, as you can see there. And the girls behind them, you can see the little sweet tarts there on their heads. It was really neat. Every little thing that went by was its own little Broadway show. This was a Bavarian band from Germany that was part of the parade. And very authentic, obviously. They have, the, they have the valve rotor trumpets, very unique. And then there was a bunch of groups from the United States. Almost every band in the parade was from the United States. Charlotte Catholic was the school that stayed with us while we were there. They were very good. Um, I just know that our, this was the shy squirrel, I know that our group is going to look amazing in this parade. And again, another theme going by, these were three singers that sang live, and it was all opera, and it was amazing. Another Bavarian band went by. And then some of these are some of the strange kinds of floats they had. These were somewhat animated. They would turn to the left or the right or open their beaks and flap their wings. It's very different. After the parade was over, we, um, we just walked around the streets, and you can see it was very, I mean, very calm, very, uh, you know, clean. Everyone was friendly with no issues. Uh, I was glad to see that no one was drunk at all. This is, this is a good shot after the parade is over. Everyone's just going on their way, and a great shot of the city.
Greetings, everyone. And now we reach the itinerary portion of the video. We're heading out on the 15th, and we're coming home on the 20th, 2016. The first day will be uh, Tuesday, uh, the 16th. And basically, we're going to leave the high school around noon and leave JFK Airport somewhere around 6 p.m. The flight that we have is an overnight flight, so most folks will sleep on the flight, but we will be landing at 6 a.m. the following morning in Dublin. We'll get our bags. Uh, from the airport, we're going to take a quick city tour, and we're going to stop at Trinity College and St. Patrick's Cathedral, which are two places that you saw in the slideshow earlier. We'll have a quick lunch someplace and then go to the hotel and dinner at the hotel or possibly a local restaurant possibly with a show. We're going to go to bed early that night because it was a long day, and the next day is St. Patrick's Day with the uh, parade. Uh, we're going to have an early breakfast. We're going to leave the hotel for the parade around 8.30. The parents will leave a little bit later, and the uh, parents will have grandstand seats. Uh, there'll be a warm-up staging area for us, and the parade will step off. And we'll, after the parade is done, we'll have some lunch, return to the hotel, grab some dinner at a local restaurant, or possibly um, we'll have a DJ dinner dance at our hotel. The next morning, which is Friday the 18th, we're going to wake up around 8 o'clock, have breakfast at the hotel, check out of the hotel, and head to the Blarney Castle, which is down south about two, two and a half hours from Dublin. After that, we're going to head over to Limerick, or Galway, depending on where which hotel we're going to stay at, depending on where we stay. Uh, right now, it looks like it's going to be Galway, but it might be Limerick, depending on the activities we choose. Uh, check into the hotel around 3 o'clock, and then, of course, we'll have a dinner show at a local restaurant, and then back to the hotel for free time. There's a pool. We'll give the kids some pool time, and then 11 p.m. lights out. Following morning, Saturday the 19th, we'll have a, a breakfast around 9 o'clock at the hotel. We'll depart for the Cliffs of Moore. After the Cliffs, we'll spend a couple hours there. We'll go to Bunratty Castle and Folk Park, uh, which the park has uh, got a bunch of things to see, and the castle you see is on the right of the screen. We'll have a little tour of the castle, and then we'll have a medieval-style dinner show, sort of like medieval times, only this is real. And we'll return to the hotel and we'll have some pool time or a movie night, and then lights out. Sunday, the uh, 20th, we'll wake up in the morning around 8 o'clock. This is all subject to whatever time our flights are. We'll wake up at 8, depart for the airport, and then flight back to JFK, get our stuff, and then head back to Stratford. Now, for the pricing. Okay, okay these prices are tentative, but they are pretty close. Okay, for a student or a chaperone, it's fourteen fifty per person, double occupancy, and that is for the land package, nineteen ninety nine per person if you want to stay by yourself in a room. All the meals are included, except a couple of lunches. All the transportation is included while we're there and to and from the airport and so on and so forth. And each of the rooms have two large beds. And the only thing that's not included is the airfare. We have an estimate right now, and we're going to try to get that as low as possible. And all travelers need to have a valid passport. So that concludes our presentation here about the Ireland trip 2016. I hope you are ready to participate in this. It's going to be a once-in-a-lifetime memorable experience. And we're going to ask everybody to send in a $100 deposit um, at the end of April, beginning of May, to secure your airfare. And my suggestion would be that you take the opportunity to put down a deposit because it is 100% refundable. And if you don't put a deposit in and you decide you want to go, then you may not get the same price that we all are going to get. So that's it. Please feel free to contact me at the office, 203 385 4261 or my email jamesmiller at benelband.org. Thanks very much.